Hi everybody, just uh, about to start the webinar. Um, starting to see the room filling in now. Can anybody hear me at all? Uh, just need to see some kind of reaction in the chat. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, you'll see that uh, we have such fantastic weather here in Scotland at the moment that I forgot my sunglasses and um, I feel great on the beach. Only if I wish, yeah. Okay, so let's get started. So everybody, thank you very much for attending this uh, first session webinar with uh, myself, James Oxton of C3D. Um, it's going to be a three part webinar and um, hopefully you can attend tomorrow and Thursday as well. Uh, because we'll work on uh, a nice model and then uh, we'll be developing it as we go along. Um, but nonetheless, you have my contact details and um, if you can't make it, then uh, just drop me an email and the sessions are being recorded. So you'll be able to jump back in when you're ready to um, catch up. So let's just go through this um, quick PowerPoint. Great to see everybody here. Um, just hope everybody is staying safe and uh, one of the most important things right now I would say is that everybody's staying and playing with SketchUp. Okay, it's a good excuse to stay away uh, from, you know, the sort of lockdown and uh, maybe if you're new to SketchUp, it's worth a, a try. I certainly can't stay away from it. Um, I'm always in front of this machine. <laughs> okay, so um, also I'd like to say a big thanks to um, Elmtech, the sole UK SketchUp distributor, and also SketchUp themselves for um, supporting this session. And maybe on Thursday, we may have um, maybe uh, some of them coming in or maybe saying hello to the the, the group and um, it's just really good that they've allowed us to um, use the material and in particular the 2020 brand model that you can see in the terrain there. Um, Q&A will be in session three, uh, just that we've got a lot to get through. Um, I'd love to answer questions as I'm going along but I have got quite a bit of work to do. Um, so if it's okay, more encouragement to come along to all the sessions. Um, but again, if you can't make it, you know, please take some notes, drop me an email, and either myself or the guys at Elm Tech, um, Kyle and Lauren, and maybe Aris at uh, SketchUp would be happy to help out. And um, future webinars, we want to do more webinars. Uh, we want to look at layout in depth. Um, extensions as there are many so we want to start to plan a webinar session on those extensions and also rendering and for those of you who are not aware yet um, Trimble released the latest maintenance release for SketchUp on the 1st of May um, which is 2020.1 um, you maybe want to check on the internet it's all over the internet uh, or sketchup.com, but also we have it on our blog on See It 3D. So you maybe want to jump in there and have a look. Some really nice subtle um, enhancements to the software. So the session today is going to be all about building a model. We're going to start building the structure, walls, floor, ceilings, and glazing. Um, and as I say, I'm repeating again. Thanks for SketchUp for allowing us to do this, to work with our model and try and um, portray how we would approach modeling uh, this design in SketchUp. And hopefully it's going to be a lot of uh, use to you. You're going to learn a lot um, and hopefully um, you really enjoy the sessions. Session two 
uh, tomorrow on adding additional fixtures and fittings, photo match and materials to the model. And then session three is going to be using some powerful extensions, preparing the model for presentation and a Q&A at the end. We're not going to be going into full depth layout uh, because of time constraints, but hopefully you'll all sign up for the next session. So the model that we were presented with from uh, SketchUp themselves, it shows how to build a strategy on any type of model that you work in, okay? We relate this to a sustainable model because we want to make sure that every part of that model can be edited at any time along the project uh, time cycle. Um, you'll see from the top there, we've got roofs working all the way down to the bathroom interior finishes. So we work in that structure all the time. You may have uh, a requirement for building very fast concept models where you maybe not have enough time to organize. That's fair enough. You have the flexibility, but if you really want to, to take SketchUp to the edge, um, living on the edge, as they say, um, really work this way and you'll see the, the added benefits to the software. Um, it will return your investment within hours. Um, the other uh, important aspect of this training here is that we always refer to the dialogues in SketchUp, which are namely used all the time, the entity info, outliner tags, which was uh, previously named as layers and also components. So we class them as our fantastic four. Maybe you use them, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe they're there and you don't realize that they are. So I would say to you, you know, just jump in, have a look, um, and you'll find that there's a lot in there that uh, can really help you to swiftly work faster and cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the SketchUp file because we need to talk about how a designer maybe thinks about this uh, idea and um, you know develops it. So when we're looking at this uh, nice image on the, the mountainside, we want to take into the uh, credit of the terrain and you know the views that are there. So when we're sketching, um, it could be by hand, it could be in SketchUp, you know, we've got a SketchUp style there on the model. So we start to look at all those surrounding aspects and to start to think of a shape that maybe fit well uh, within the design. Uh, we may play about with it, swivel it around, um, maybe come up with the, the, the shape in total. It may not be completely 100%, but it's a start. And we're quite convinced that this is going to sit well within uh, the surroundings. So we'll maybe orbit around, have a feel for it, get rid of what we think doesn't help the design, because you know in the background this building's sitting on the terrain, so we don't want to do too much excavation. If if possible, avoid it and uh, maybe put the building onto some kind of stone structure that you see there. So, you know, there's a lot of thought going on to that. Uh, but using SketchUp, we then come up with the footprint. We then have to think about, well, how do we enter into this building? So where is the best approach? So we've identified where we want to enter into the building. And then how do we want to pass through the building? You know, do we want to walk in and then stop? Or do we want to take advantage of the breathtaking views, uh, which I would say, yes, we want to do that. So we have the path set and we want to have uh, nice window openings, glazed openings, um, taking uh, advantage of the vista views um, on the site. So then we, have decided that we've formed this as the design. 
we sketch it up on paper, we sketch it in SketchUp, we then turn this into from what is a flat 2D into a 3D concept model. So you see there we've got the unit at the back at the top um, and we have the circulation link and the access to the decks. Included with dimensions for our own needs, we need to you know, size it, scale it to suit. Um, color identify, you know, the, the main components. And look at the stair access. So we go from the upper level unit down to the lower level unit. So we have a, a nice stair access at the back. So this brings to our attention that we have the design ready to be set in stone. Uh, we have the dimensions, which I have in paper by my side, which I'm going to draft through with them. Everything is there in 3D. Always remember the stickiness, okay? Uh, we, are, we, we can work in a concept model up to a certain point, but we have to think about the future sustainability of that model. So we have to think of avoiding stickiness, which is typical of SketchUp. And then if we build correctly, we're going to build something which is accurate, gives a lot of information, um, but we can actually then use that and build from it. So this is the introduction and the exception uh, part of the design. I'm now going to jump into a fresh SketchUp model. And what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to solely focus on the drawing. So I'm just going to turn my video off for now. Um, hopefully that's not too much of a problem. And then I'll jump back later on. OK, so let's begin. So I'm going to take the pencil and I'm going to click on the origin and move along here. We've got the width of this room. I'm going to be calling out sizes. So four, five, seven, two. I'm using the pencil, I'm going to come down here in the green direction. Two, eight, nine, six. Back along in the red direction. Ten, zero, five, eight. You're probably wondering those weird sizes. They're actually um, created from the Imperial set out that the SketchUp team did in America. So I want to give it the same, uh, but we're in metric here. So 5133, three, enter. Oh. Come back. 5133, three, enter. Let's go along. Let's zoom in on this. Go along in the red direction. Hold the shift key to lock it. Put our pencil down to the origin, click, let go, and then draw down in the green to that origin. So we have the first surface here, which is the deck below. Um, I'm going to go to the tape tool now and click on this edge. Move up. Um, the size I want up at the top, where it hits the other, uh, the top unit, upper unit, um, is 7980. 7980, enter. And I'm going to draw a line here on the edge here which comes up in the green direction of 5345. Enter. Now, I know from my sketch design that we have a 30 degrees um, upper unit here. So I'm going to go to the protractor, click on the end point, move along, click in the red, move up. Now, if I move my cursor around the outer edge of the protractor, it snaps to these points, these uh, snap marks. So. I'm going to look for 30. I can type it in and just click. So there's a 30 degree um, pitch line. I'm going to go to the tape tool again, click on this guideline, move up, and the same width as the unit below, 4572, enter. I'm going to take the pencil, I'm using the shortcut for a pencil line, which is L, come down on the line here, 1838. Just zooming in, I'm going to touch the edge, then move round, and it will give me 
perpendicular to edge. I'm going to hold the shift key to lock that. Move up, click on the guideline at the top here, click. So this is the width of the upper level um, of the design. 14021, enter. Touch this, come down at perpendicular, hold the shift key, come down to here, click. Move straight down with the pencil along this line and click. So there's the upper unit created in its plan form. Let's take the pencil here and draw right up to here. Come down to here, there is the lower unit. So let's go to the side here where we have the balcony deck. I'm going to go to the tape tool, click here. The balcony deck width is 1829. Enter. Similarly down here, 1829. I like to tape out things first because um, it kind of sets a guide for me, um, pardon the pun. Um, 305, enter. And I'm going to click here. This is 2745, enter. Um, I'll draw a line. Let's bring a line in here so we know where we are. So we're coming up here. Down at the bottom left, you'll see the length. 1829, click. Come down here. The size coming along here is 721. Then I'm going to go straight out to here. I'm going to touch on this edge, move out, hold the shift key for accuracy. That size is 350 for the stair. Click. Come down to here. The width of the stair is 3490. Come back down. I'm going to touch this here for parallel. Take it down, hold the shift key, click on this point. That gives us the 2745. Click. I'll click again for the 305. I'll come down to here to the corner of the deck. Click. Okay, so we need to come into here and finish this off. It's going to press escape and I'll go to T for tape. Click here and move out. This width of this stair here is 1676. Enter. Okay, so I can take the pencil now. Click here. Come up to here, click, and then just trace along the guidelines. Come down here, click, and this fills this deck in. I'll just draw a line across here to separate the deck from the stair. Okay, so there's the deck, there's the stair, there's the upper level, the lower level, the lower deck. Uh, we want a stair in here uh, so we don't forget. The stair here will be set back from the front edge at 152. 152 is the width of the steel frame. Okay, so we'll set it back from there. Um, so the first riser will be there. But we're gonna come up from this size we're looking at uh, from that point is gonna be 5791, enter. Okay, so that will allow me to draw the top riser line across to here and click. Now, we will also, just as I'm talking you through this, just to trace here, because this here, let me just get in a little bit closer. This here and here is the stair one, okay? Stair two is going to be this one here. Stair three is going to be inside. We're going to model that later, okay? So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to just get rid of this here. We want to now appreciate that we have this as a, just doing a break there, we have this as what I call a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, it's flat, it's 2D. Um, I always work this way because um, just straight from your 2D design, it then forms the basis. It's the foundation for building up into 3D. So, what I've done with this uh, SketchUp model as well, folks, is I've created tags in here already because, um, you know, it's going to save time. I don't want to be typing in all day, but I want to have a SketchUp template that has all the tags for the project. It just makes life so much easier. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take the edit tool, uh, the edit tool down, delete guides, click the surface at the top here. 
C for components, and this is going to be called upper level underscore units. I would just love it to have a tag option on this, uh, but in a way, let's click create. Let's go to the entity info, click the drop down, and it's upper level units. I'm going to lock that down. So you'll see the thickness appears around the outside shape of that rectangle. That's telling us that this is now isolated from the rest of the model. In fact, when I click on this, there's a red outline. That's because it's locked, okay? I want to adjust something here. Um, I'm gonna right click and unlock, and then double click to go inside. What I want to do is change the axis position uh, because I want to make the bounding box of the component fit neatly around this rectangle. So I'm just going to right click near here, change the axis, click, move down here, click, move across there, click, and there you see the bounding box has changed to suit the shape of the rectangle. Right click out, close, right click lock. Select the surface here, see for component, this is lower level underscore unit. Create. Put it onto the tag, lower level unit, and I'm going to go inside it, okay? Because what I want to do is extend it through to the back. Now remember, we're still working in plan view here. I'm going to press H. H is to hide the rest of the model, okay? It's really useful um, so that you can get, you know, everything else around uh, your initial uh, surface edge geometry inside a component off the screen. I'm going to click here with the pencil, go up to here, click, come along the edge here as reference, hold the shift key, that will lock it along that line, and I'll take the pencil down onto this vertical line and click, let go, trace down to here and click, press H. So now you see if I orbit round this as a surface, I'm just going to erase that, and I'm going to go back to top view, right click close, select it, and lock it. Okay, I'm going to work around here now. This one here, C for component, upper level deck. Create. Get inside it. Let's get rid of this line. Oh. Has been an extended line. Hold on. Touch there. Come across down to there. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to change this um, axis here to reshape the bounder box. Select this and put it onto the upper level deck. Lock it down. Select this here. See for component. This is stair two, set component axis, more efficient, create, stair two, select this one, C, stair one, set component axis, that's fine there, press escape, create, put it on to stair one, and finally, this one here, C, this is lower level deck, create, and also tag that onto the lower level deck. Okay, just going to orbit around, I'm going to double click in here, and just finish this off again, because there was an overlap with the surfaces with the stair, just lock in along the red, Pencil on the end point, click, let go of the shift key, down here, click, and then erase. Right click out, close. Okay, so we have the jigsaw. Okay, now, the thing about this one here is that we want to analyze the color by tag. Very important, color by tag tells us how well the model's organized. You see how the colors have changed? This is showing us the coloring here to suit um, the tagging system, so worth the check. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go to the top view, 
I have a couple of styles in here. Um, one in particular is for biaxis. Biaxis, if you can see it, let me just thicken this up a bit with the edges. Profiles on. The red and green emphasize that they are parallel to the red and green axis, whereas the black is not. Okay, so if I wanted to go to the axis and reset the axis against this here, if I click this corner for the origin, move up here, click, move down to here, click, you see how the bi axis color now determines if the lines around the um, upper unit are perpendicular, they are perfect. Okay, so we can right click on the axis and reset it. I'm just going to go back to the style I was working on. This one here. Okay, so let's orbit right now. We're going to move all of this up. I'm just going to select all of this, right click, unlock, and the heights. We're going to start raising up the upper uh, unit, the deck, and the stair. In fact, the stair has not been. Ah, let's grab this again. Let's go to stair two. Yes. There's a strange thing happen. Hold on, let me just go to the top view. Let me just reset this. Create it. Let's go around there. Change the axis. Let's select it. Let's call this steer two. I'll call this steer two without the gap. Tag it on to steer two. There we go. Okay, so let's grab the upper unit, the top deck, and the stair. Move it up. <laughs> okay, let's move this up three meters. And let's get rid of that one. It was hiding under there. Okay, so let's go into this unit. Press H. Fish pull up three meters. Let's get rid of this line. Right click out, close. Let's double click in here. Fish pull up. This will be three meters. Erase the line here. Okay, so there's the design starting to come together. Right click out, close. The stair here, I'm going to go inside this. Um, this actually, in fact, let me click out. There's a 150 uh, riser. I'm just going to move this up 150. I'm going to double click into here, select this here, and then go to the move tool. Press the arrow up key. There's a split in here, okay? Formed from the break here before. So let me just have a look at it. Another split here. Let me just trace this. H. Let me just test this here. There we go. So, what I did was I fixed the edges there. Basically, in SketchUp, if you have breaks on your lines without using an extension, you can actually find the endpoints, click move away, find the endpoint, click move away, erase them, and it joins it back into one edge. Just like magic. Okay, arrow up key, press H, take this up to the top, click, right click out, close. So that's forming the pitch line for the stair. This one here at the back, I'm going to click on here. This moves down in the blue with the arrow up key. Oops, let me just change that and split that. Beautiful. Always something that catches you out with SketchUp. Okay, 1650, enter. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it's starting to come to life now. Let's go into the upper unit now. We want to really start pressing in here. Double click. So we have got offsets to make for the steelwork. So the offset here is 152, enter. So we can double click there, there. I'm going to press H, do the same here, and underneath. OK, 
Okay. So that, that, the vertical surfaces basically, I'm going to select them, see for components, upper level walls, EXT, for upper level walls external. Let's double click inside, we can see we've formed them. Okay. I'm going to click out, I'm not going to thicken them up yet, I want to get them onto the proper tag. Okay, I'm just going to lock it down. The roof surface, C for component, upper level roof. Let's double click inside there, there it is. So what we're doing is we're grabbing where possible an actual surface. Then we'll develop it later on. Same with the floor. Upper level floor. Create. Okay, this goes on to the upper level floor. Then we have the framework. See how it's isolated now? I'm just going to press C for component, upper level steel. Let's go into the steel. If something's happened there, let me just offset. I think it's, um, yep. Click there just to break that out. The same thing's happened on the ground. It's going to double click it, delete it. Sometimes SketchUp tries to fill in the coplanar boundary again to form a surface in, but we just broke it out now. I'm going to push pull this down. So I'm using the sort of conventional way of doing this in SketchUp. Um, you know, we can look at other plugins later on to do this, but it's always good to start with very good standard uh, training on how to use SketchUp without them, first of all. Let me just break that along there again. There's a thick line with the profiles. Get that out. Seems to have formed another surface in there. Let me just get this over here. Delete. Let me delete this. Okay. Let me just push pull this down again. Pull this over to here. Just going around the sides here just to make sure that everything is properly formed. Okay, so what we can do is um, we can select the orange. Orange is negative. I have it that color so I can see the sort of negative surface. And then I have Alt R to um, reverse the faces as a shortcut. Again, there are other extensions that can do the same. I'm just going to erase some of these lines right now, just going around there, cleaning up the framework. Okay, we're nearly there with that. As I said, this is just a manual process at the moment on this frame. Okay, click out, select it, put it on the steel, upper level steel. Let's paint it with a color. Steel color, click, and there you go. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the tags here for this unit. What I want to do is I want to go to the tags and I want to basically turn off the roof. Help if I put it, yeah, lower level. Okay, we'll put it onto the wrong. Okay, upper level roof. Thank you. Upper level roof. 
turn it off. Okay. So the walls, let's go into the walls. Right click on lock, double click. I'm just going to push pull this in, one, five, two. Pulling this in, one, five, two as well. You see the face reversing, um, it's flipping around the surface. But that's okay, we can flip that back. Okay, I'm just going to pull this over one, five, two, and then select these. Alt R. Select these, Alt R, and there we have the walls. Okay, let's go to the floor. Let's go into the floor. Let's push pull this up one, five, two. Copy, push, pull this down, one, five, two. The reason for that is we need to go into the building here. I'm just going to pull this over to the steel frame and align it. We'll deal with this cutout here later on uh, because it intersects. So we will intersect that. Okay, so I'm now outside of the floor. I'm going to go down here and start to add in some walls and put the opening for the stair. So taping from the inside, I'm actually doing this on top of the component. I'm not inside any other component than the unit. And this is expressed in the outline of where you see this is blue. It's got four blue squares with a white hollow infill dotted outline around it. I'm working inside upper level unit. Inside upper level unit, we've got upper level steel floor, upper level walls external. Okay, roof is turned off. It's actually hidden at the moment. Um, so I'm going to draw on the top here. I'm going to type in 3660, enter. Try again. 3660, enter. Click on here, move across 150, enter. And then from here, I'm going to tape down 1830. There we go. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Just a flat surface. I'm going to select the surface, make it a component. Upper level, wall or walls internal, there we go. Create, put it onto the tag for upper level walls internal, and I'm gonna double click to go inside the component and pull it up to the underside. Right click out, close. On the top here, I'm gonna go into the floor world, so I've double clicked to go into the component, then click the surface. You see that this exposes the surface. I actually see some edges here. I'm going to use a plugin called Cleanup by TomTom. There's an option here to merge coplanar faces. Clean it. What it does is it gets rid of the edges and faces are reduced. Very good plugin. Saves a lot of time. You saw me going around there erasing the edges out of the steelwork. Saves a lot of time, that one. So let's go to top. Press H, bring the walls back. Tape over from here, 1065. Over here for the going of the stair, 3142. Tip off here, come down, 1676. Press H to hide the rest of the model. Draw a rectangle from here to here. Okay, that breaks the surface on the top. You see the active highlighting of SketchUp? When you form a boundary on a surface, it shows the difference between the, the boundaries being formed. A very good visual indicator. Okay, I'm going to go to push-pull. Click here to pull down, but I'm going to press the control key on Windows or the options key on the Mac. Down to here, click. Okay, so that's created a hole underneath. 
click in here, delete, click in here, delete. Select those yellow surfaces and reverse them round. It's always good to have Gray's Good facing you. Um, it's a kind of sketch of standard rule of thumb. Right click, reverse. Okay, let's press H. So under here, um, it's kind of hard to see the other building here. It's kind of faded. So what I'm going to do is go to Window, Model Info, Components, and I'm going to slide this fade rest of model. See how I can see the edges exposed now? Take it up to about there. I'm going to select the edge here and here, and I'm going to offset this 152. Extend this line. I'll just trace this along to here. And then down here, I'm going to take this along. Hold the shift key on the red axis and put my pencil on the slope. Let me just show you that here, okay? It's determining where that line stops. Click. If I hold my um, if I hold my pencil here on the surface, hold the shift key down, move up. This will determine the actual line of intersection here. I'm going to take it up to here and then click. See how it fills that in? I can delete that out. And then what I'll do is I'll push pull this down. So this is going to be the stairwell, okay? And then we'll cut it back later. Just going to extend this right through to here. Click. Pull this right up here. Get rid of that. We'll penetrate through into the other unit later on. I just want to form the kind of structure part. Get the idea. I can get rid of that line. Okay. On the side here, we have an opening. I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to push pull this through. So we'll put some glazing in there later on. Let's go down to the bottom here now and let's do something slightly different. Press H. Erase. Okay. I want to form a shell. Okay. Do this in a slightly different approach. I'm going to click out, select this, and I'm going to go to another TomTom Tom Wizzy extension um, called Shell. Now, if I go to X ray, um, if I click and drag, you'll see that it's got like an inside grip up here. It's like a volume. So I want that to be 76. Okay, 76, enter. What it creates is a grip inside that outer box. I want to go inside that. And what I want to do there is I want to select all the surfaces. So I've just got the line work. This is the center of the steel. Um, I'm going to select the top. I'm going to go to View, Toolbars. I'm going to bring on the Profile Builder. OK, I created a, a flat 2D profile earlier on. Um, profile Builder is a fantastic tool. We'll look at it in depth uh, a little bit later on. But I have created a 152 by 152 section of the steel. There it is there. What I can do with all these lines selected, I can go to Build Along Path. Let me undo back. We can put it on Material. And we can put it onto the proper layer. So we want to go to lower level steel. Select. Build along path. Same as the bottom one. Select. Build along path. If we do the vertical one here. Now if you notice an x-ray. This path line is going right up here. So if I use build along path here. The steel goes through the junction. I don't want that. Okay. So what I want to do is undo back. Select right through. I'm going to right click on one of the lines and believe it or not, intersect faces of context. And what that will do is it will split the line work. OK, 
Okay, so I can select those two, build a long path. This one here, I don't want to go for this um, section here. You know, if I click on this here, it might not be ideal, the corner junction that I'm after. So I'm going to create my own profile. I'm going to turn off X-ray. I'm going to go to the pencil, trace along here, down to here, up to here, to create this rhombus shape. If I select it, I'm going to press plus my profile, click OK. What that does is it creates it here in the uh, library with a center point. Now, if I just click on that there, click here, draw up, maybe going in the wrong direction, I can mirror it around, click again, and there it goes. But I want to make sure that this is on steel and this is on lower level steel. Okay, take this right up to there. Perfect. All I need to do now is copy this over to the other side. Job done. Click out. Okay, let's do the framework. Sorry, let's do the wall work, I should say. Um, I'm going to use another tool, um, which is extensions from Sketch Education. Um, it is called multiple offsets. One, five, two, inside, delete the face, no, click OK. OK, so if I double click on this, I can see all the lines formed. I'm going to turn off the steel. And you see the outline. Now, one thing to be aware of that the, these lines here become um, curves, so we need to explode them. So I'm just going to select all. Let me just triple click this here, right click um, and intersect. Yeah, let's go to explode the curve, sorry. So if we explode the curve, that means that these lines are individual. The reason for that is that the rhombus on the corner here is wider. So what I need to do is select the line and then just move it over to match. So that, I mean, the detail of the steel here may be completely different. This is just a, a working example um, showing how geometry interacts and how you can get it to change very easily as long as you build up a structure in your modeling. Okay, so that's looking good. Okay, I'm going to select those surfaces. See for components, lower level, unit, sorry, lower level, walls, external, create, double click to go inside. So there they are there, okay. Let's click out. Let's click the top. See, let's just check this. There's the boundary there. See, floor level, roof. Create. Underneath, see, Floor level, floor, create. Okay, so we don't really need those um, frame sections anymore. Let's go into the walls now. Let's push pull this back. Let's do a 152. Push pull this over 152. Double click there is a repeat. Double click there is a repeat. Let's just check how the inside here fits. Okay, let's turn off the upper level unit. Turn off the lower level roof. Let's just put it on to tag. 
but to tag it. Lower level roof, there we go. So now if we look in the corner there, we can see the walls need to be extended towards there. So we select that, we go to there, select that, we go to there. Okay. Let's check this here. This line will carry on through, as will this. We can get rid of this here. And we can push pull this right down. Let's erase these edges. So I want to get this model to a point where I'm happy with it today. I'm just going to work up to um, four o'clock on the dot. So just working through the best we can. Okay, the floor. Push pull up one five two. Copy push pull down one five two. And just pull out this one five two. But it's the same here, it goes out the other side. So one five two. Sometimes Sketch will have that um, intended reaction for it to go in an opposite direction. Just grab it, pull it back the way that you want it to go. Similarly there, 152. Select all the line work. Instead of going around these edges and manually um, deleting them, let's go to the cleanup tool. Merge coplanar faces, cleans all the lines up, reduced edges to, faces reduced. Fantastic. Click out. Okay, so let's double click here and push pull this in for an opening. We actually have an opening up the side here. The size here is 4420. Click out. Okay, what I want to do now is do the interior walls. So the interior wall starts from here, moving back, we have 695. We then have 150. Let's just match that on the ground because we always draw the footprint on the ground. So we have the bathroom here in the store, which is 2200. We then have a 100 mil thick wall. We then have a, a one meter wide small cupboard with the 100 wall. Okay, we don't know yet where this opening is going to be to cut in here. Let's do that now. Let's orbit round to the side. Let's bring on the upper level units. Okay, so in fact, while we're at it, before I forget, let's just clean this up. Along in the purple, hold the shift key, pencil onto the face, click, come down here, click. Push pull this up there. Nice and clean. Okay, let's do the other side. So the inference engine is very powerful to determine apparent intersections. Raise there. Clean up the underside. Let's just get rid of this for now. Really good. Okay. So if we go back round underneath, press H, we're going into the stairwell. Just going to zoom in and go in here. So I can see this is an opening. So what I'm going to do is double click to go into the um, lower level units and I'm going to draw a rectangle down to the steel. Press H. Okay. T for tape off the edge here onto there. Draw a line from here to here. Push pull that down. Voila. We press H here. Sorry, let's go in here. We can see how we can get inside there now. Okay. 
Uh, what we can do with the underside of this is we can fill this in. So we've got about six minutes left. We are right on track where I want to be, okay? Fill in the floor. So this is like a concrete and a structure base. Um, let's press H, have a look down from the top. You see the hiding option is so powerful. Um, you can really get yourself around the model very fast. Okay, very, very good. Click out. Come out from here. Let's go into here now. So this is going to determine where the wall slopes down to come in here. So let's turn off the upper level unit. Tape off here over to this corner. Come down here, 100 enter. Let's draw the lines. Again, the footprint of the walls. I see some questions coming up. I like how you break the model down. Do you group those items together or prefer all those components all the time? Is it possible for you to share the elements of the seminar with us? With us? This way we can see ourselves how the setup works. This way we have a physical model we can play with. Maybe I can see about this uh, model being shared from SketchUp, I really don't know. But what you have is this video has been recorded live. It's been recorded for you, so you know you have that as an option. I personally think this is an excellent uh, certified training program uh, model. Um, I've gone through it from start to finish and worked up. I've had about three or four attempts on modeling it different ways, and this definitely, it all cracked, the code cracked this morning for me. Um, really good webinar, thank you, however, apologies as I have missed the first 10 minutes. Um, what's the name of the organization toolbar window you're using with Outliner? Um, the organization toolbar is tabs that I've created. I like to break these down because if you have them all together, you scroll up and down a lot. So I just like to have the organized tabs, um, you know, then set to materials and set to presentation. Uh, but we do this as part of the initial setup before anybody gets trained. We get the whole interface set up. Okay. Are you using voice commands to enter dimensions? Uh, I wish I was. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go to the tape tool and I'm going to come across here and it is 170 enter. I'm going to click here, it's 830 enter and the height of the door is 2540 enter. Okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle over to here. Okay, I'm going to select all this, see for component, floor level internal walls, let's do walls, internal, create, double click, let's go inside. So we have this here at 70. Then we have the 830. This is obviously speed modeling 305. So what I'm gonna do here is select it, control C, then control V to paste this in here. Control V to paste this in here. Um, there are many ways to approach SketchUp, um, many plans for modeling. Different people work with different levels. I like to try the fastest, uh, quickest for me anyway. Um, hopefully you get an idea of how that is from, from what I'm doing. Um, windows, doors will be, you know, some glazing will be putting in tomorrow. Uh, to add in fittings and furniture. Let me just bring the upper level back. Tags, upper level roof, 
upper level unit, lower level roof. Okay, this here, we need to go into this roof here. The reason why we need to do that is we need to select it and intersect faces with the model. So because the steel is penetrating through the slab above, we're using that tool to break that out. Let's just pull this up here, pull this up here, get rid of that and that. I certainly find this way of working works 100%, especially using different plugins because you're basically forming solids, you know, um, that tend to work really fast and create volumes so that when you're hatching, you're creating hash patterns from the model using, you know, plugins like Scallop and Solid Hatch on the section cut tool. Give this a bit of thickness, push pull this down. Uh, let's go for 200 enter. Push pull this down, 200 enter. I think we're bang on four o'clock, folks. This is a good place for me to stop because it's where I want to be. Um, if I go to X-ray, um, adding some glazing is very straightforward at the moment. I mean, if I just do something very quickly, I can draw over here, offset it, 50, select it, make it a component, W1, go inside it, change the axis, try one more time James, okay I can push pull this in 150, so this is like uh, the manual approach which there's nothing wrong with it, Tomorrow we're going to be doing some really nice things with some extensions. Okay, just go in here. I can go to materials. Just very quickly, just give us a material paint. Go to glass. Just add a bit of glazing in. Um, and then here we have one more steel member to put in. So I'm just going to go into the steel, press H. Tape across from here. Get into the wall. Because we have, um, you know, very tight one hour sessions, I'm doing my best here to show you, hopefully, that the speed that you can see has really been proven as a, I'm just going to copy this and push pull it. It's fine. Go to the steel component, edit, paste in place, push pull it through. I would love to do this slower with you guys and girls over a coffee, but um, I'm sure this has been a good sort of whirlwind piece around the model for now. Um, so what we'll do, folks, we'll stop there. Tomorrow we'll be adding in fixtures and fittings. Um, I've got some questions coming up here. Well done, James. Looking forward to your next two sessions. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, James. Reminds me how much I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know due to not getting time in SketchUp. How did you make tab, tabs instead of huge sets of pallets? Yes. We have, uh, we're going to be uploading some uh, free videos on our YouTube page, but it's already there on older versions of um, SketchUp where it shows you to put the Tabs in. Um, can I rewatch this webinar after? As I missed, yes, 
Um, it's recorded, so you will be able to see this and um, have no worries. We'll get that over to you. So, folks, um, unless anybody else has got any other questions, well, here's a couple more. I've been using this since version 5, like seeing a different point of view. Thank you. Is that a good point of view? Um, why components instead of groups? Basically, I like to save everything as a component into the component browser. Okay, Then by that, I can save these out and work on them separately. I've got a library of parts. Um, I can go in and modify them separately and then load them into the model. I just like the idea of components and unique components all the way because um, project sharing um, works well. Groups are not bad, um, but I think I work better with components. Um, any other questions? Um, we'll call it a day. Um, I can give you another 10 minutes. Anybody wants to stay by, or we maybe cut it short. Let me just get rid of some of these guides. So tomorrow, what we'll be doing is we'll be developing the stairs because I want to focus on extensions there with that. Um, adding in some neat windows and doors. Um, getting the stair finalized here, and then interiors with photo matching and a nice balustrade system around here. Okay, any more questions? I think that kind of wraps up then if everybody's, um, right, let me just see here some more. Very fast versus me being very slow, Mark. Okay. I'm not as fast as I used to be, I can tell you that. Thanks, James. See you tomorrow, okay, Adriana. Thanks, James. As usual, learned some new tips. Building on training already done. Great. Where's my speedos? I don't wear speedos at the beach. Um, I like to wear a jumper, you know, stay warm, take my sketch up badge with me. Please can you send me as I arrive late. Yes, the link for the webinar will be going out. Um, thank you, James. See you the next time. Uh, okay, brilliant from stretch to end. Wondering if you could show some another some another times for importing CAD drawings given by absolutely. We have a workflow for that. Um, I haven't seen it being used on the internet. Um, we have it specific to the way we work. I might be wrong, but it's a it's slightly different way of approach. Maybe uh, cover that in a video at some point. You might, Richard, be to see your model so fast. Well, I thought it wasn't as fast as, as I wanted it to be, um, but great, thank you. A lot of messages here. I like the tab system you have. Yeah, I like the tab system as well. I really do. Seminar will be on YouTube, yes. Can you see my questions here? And all yes. Thanks, James, great refresher. Are you using a roller ball mouse? Standard mouse. That's all I have. Okay, Angus, thanks. Can I email you a specific question? Yes, Chris, no problem at all. Another question. I can see that you are more of a PC user than a Mac user. You prefer doing on PC platform, not Mac. I'd like to get a Mac uh, one day and then I can tell you what I prefer. Um, tab systems are light. My eyes have gone mad, so have mine. Um, thanks, James. Okay, so there's quite a lot there if I can go through them all. Quick question, Mark. I have a friend that may be interested in joining. Are there still spaces? Yes, there are still spaces left, Mark. Um, you just sign up um, and uh, join in tomorrow and Thursday. I feel I need to spread all this knowledge to as many. Feel, yeah, join the club, Mark. Join the club. Um, as many people as I can. Okay, well, folks, that's it. I'm just going to go now. Um, 
I'll see you tomorrow. The yeah, we'll start about. I'll be online about five to. So if you can all say then, I'll see you then. Okay. Take care.